Hi, my name is Marianne Morrow from Ninth Gear Technologies, and I'm so pleased to be moderating this amazing all-female panel today, which is a nice surprise. And our area of focus is in digitization and looking at the metaverse and how that is delivering a fully socialized digital lifestyle. So my background is 25 plus years of institutional finance, and I am at the intersection of finance and technology, moving um, especially digital assets in around the world and making it happen faster to removing settlement lags. And so as I kind of think about moving to this fully digitized social lifestyle, I think of COVID and what we've experienced the last couple of years as a catalyst for change. And as I look at modernizing finance using all kinds of new technology, I think about not just what to do, but how to make it happen and how to make it happen faster. A lot of some of the new types of technologies are looking at things like the metaverse. And one of the things that we're going to unpack today is really what is the metaverse? I looked up a definition and in the broadest terms, the metaverse is understood as a graphical rich virtual space with some degree of verisimilitude and verisimilitude, um, which I also looked up, is the appearance of being true. So where people can work, play, shop, socialize in, in short, to do things that humans like to do together in real life, but now in this new digital world. So let's start to introduce our panel here today. Lynn Marler, you um, are so gracious to come and join us today, and you are a last-minute addition, but certainly not um, the least. We spent a lot of time together, and you have worked on Wall Street. You went from Bank One to J.P. Morgan and then BNY. So you know, what are you doing in the metaverse? What was your awakening in this? How did you shift your mindset from you know, old-school banking to what's happening in this metaverse? Well, thank you for uh, letting me, uh, you know, talk about my experience doing that. And uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. You know, I have to say, if you had asked me this question a year ago, you know, about NFTs, I probably would have said, "Mm, you know, don't believe in it, you know, can't see any value, doesn't make sense. But, um, you know, having gone down the blockchain rabbit hole, as they say, um, I was approached last December. Uh, so I, I've been chair of the Boston Blockchain, and we've certainly talked about NFTs, but I never thought that financial and NFT would sort of, uh, you know, intersect at any point. Um, long story short, one of um, a company approached me and said, hey, I'm looking to do an NFT project. I am a hundred year old manufacturing company made in America. Uh, that is essentially a for- metal forging company. And, you know, I was like, this has got to be a joke, right? I mean, and so, you know, I, I, I basically listened to his story and I thought about it and I said, you know, it would be really interesting for me who has very little experience in the NFT world, though I do have experience in the blockchain world and crypto digital assets to get on this journey. And so I called him up and I said, hey, I would be willing to do it, but I need to pick a partner uh, that really knows the space better than I do. And I picked a partner who, and we've, you know, the rest, I guess they say is history. So that's fantastic. And you know, what are you seeing in this NFT space? What do you do that you weren't able to do in the real world? Well, in this case, we are building um, probably one of the first 3D um, pieces of art that is uniquely numbered. So we've taken up, and I can actually show you because I have it here. So we've taken this company who makes, I don't know if you can see, this is a holiday ornament. They make several things. They have three different verticals, but this is a holiday ornament. And they want to create this scene, which is a scene looking into a living room with a Christmas tree, kids on the staircase, snow on the windows, and a bird looking in. They wanted to recreate that in the metaverse. And, you know, it was a really interesting project. And so the way, as we evolved, you know, this became um, a piece of art that is unique, obviously. You know, it's 3D. It is numbered. And it is what they believe will be another channel to sell their products and a channel that in some cases, while this first launch is probably expensive in a sense, uh, beyond this first launch, they look at it as another channel. They could sell merchandise here. Um, So it, uh, 
the the other thing that I, I would say is unique about this particular launch is they're also doing a physical um, gift with the NFT, which is somewhat unusual. Uh, so we, our launch is June 16th, and I would say everybody's really excited about it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Pearly, Pearly Chen, I wanted to introduce you. You've gone from McKinsey to Goldman, and then you're doing VR at Vibe. What's the vibe at Vibe? Oh, my God. <laughs> the, the vibes at Vibe are always good. That's why I launched a podcast called Good Vibes with Ooh. Vibe, where yeah, I, I feature that. all these incredible founders that I invest in who are pushing the boundaries of using immersive technology to improve lives and society. And so I hope everyone can check it out. That's really, you know, a lot of these founders and builders and, and developers in this ecosystem are really who are inspiring us to push the boundaries what this technology can do. At HTC Vive, of course, we were a smartphone pioneer since the 90s. And since 2015, we've been shipping commercial consumer and enterprise virtual reality products products, content services around the world. Uh, I personally have most enjoyed among my very many hats investing in founders because, you know, the, these are none of us, small companies or big companies can build this future alone. We need to build it with a large village, like what we were just talking about in child rearing. And so in finding, identifying founders with huge, bold visions, but a really kind heart on what this technology should and can deliver for society in terms of value um, and the evolution for what we have today, I think that's really largely, really, really important. And so I actively invest in founders that are building in this space and across all the fundamental technologies that will help us bring this next evolution of internet alive, which we now call the metaverse. Uh, since 2015, we call this vibe reality because if you think about the human experience with our digital lifestyle, we first had computer, the nascency of the internet. Well, Pearly, we... We lost you for a second. Am I back? Oh, oh, yep, okay. You're back. So yeah. we it, with the with the computer and internet, we have a lot of two D text based experiences. Then with three G, four G, mobile. Oops. 3G, 4G okay. mobile computing, we started to have have a lot of applications that, that were not imagined before. Business models, video consumption, communications with one another, change the way we interact with work and each other. Now, the next evolution of personal computing platform will just simply be more three-dimensional, more immersive, more AI-empowered, and always connected to the edge, to the cloud via next-generation network technologies like 5G mm -hmm. in the near future of 6G, 7G. <laughs> you know, what have you. So this this really uh, is simple to think about what the metaverse really is, is essentially evolution of our personal computing platform, how we interact with our digital content and how we interact with one another and how we, you know, how like today we already spend a large portion of our time in the digital realm, writing emails, doing video conference calls, sitting in in at home to do to, to conference speaking. Uh, all of this two-dimensional uh, interaction will just naturally evolve to be three-dimensional contextual, much more immersive. And the promise of that is in absolutely incredible, unleashing human imagination in a way that was not possible before with previous technologies. Yeah. You know, Pearly, I went to a, a event at Stanford about a month ago and yeah. they were, one of the gentlemen was from Microsoft and he was talking about what Microsoft was doing at the metaverse. And he was saying that sometimes instead of going onto these platforms and having him appear, he started to have his avatar appear in his place, but his avatar is not just a picture. It is an interactive picture. And now they're starting to experiment where they're putting together meetings. And if I am in France speaking French and you don't parlez-vous français, I would be able to speak and you would be able to see the translation in the bottom. So Absolutely. we're starting to see that. And Abigail Johnson just launched her, from Fidelity, who is the CEO of Fidelity, just uh, launched the use of their metaverse and they're able to interact on their rooftops. So we're starting to see these really interesting experiments. I want to introduce our, our uh, next panelist, Olu Shalo. Um, can you introduce yourself? And you're also from the finance world. You've had uh, some fascinating experiences. And tell us how you've gone from, also from finance, all of us have spent a lot of time in the financial world. How did you move from, from banking um, into more a technological um, emphasis in your career. Excellent. Um, okay. My name is Olushola Adenuga. 
uh, MTC of uh, Ola Systems. Um, we're in Nigeria here. And um, I would say I've been running this company now for 15 years. And um, I could say that we pioneered um, cloud implementation here and in UAE uh, for Oracle. And um, I was in banking for 20 years, but in the IT space, uh, being CIO of uh, various banks here uh, for like 20 years before. So it's not, I'm still in the, you know, the space that I am familiar with. Uh, well, the good thing is that most of my customers are also, you know, financial institutions now. So just in a comfortable place. Um, where, well, for me, if I can speak a little bit of uh, uh, on um, Metaverse, I mean, it's quite exciting, but f I feel that we've been doing some fundamentals on that, you know, uh, in the past years, when we look at platforms like Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, I think like minds are coming together. I I'm quite excited because I saw a bit of that some years ago with my son when he came back from U.S. to come back home. And uh, all of a sudden, he's not bored. I was worried when he came. But when he settled down, he said he has some friends online, they're playing games, uh, to be precise, my Minecraft, and uh, he's buying things online to, to up his game. I, I, I found it very interesting. And I think that where we're going with Metaverse would be quite more interesting because, again, we already have an existing platform. Uh, it's just that we're now trying to build on top of that. Like I said, the Facebook, the WhatsApp, the other uh, social media um, um, areas, sessions. So for me, I feel with Metaverse, we're going to have more realistic, um, you know, setting. It makes it will make life more, much more interesting. And then you can mix with other culture. And without having to leave your space, some other country, which uh, I think is very exciting. Uh, do you think, do you think yeah, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but do you think it's going to bring more people together so that they can interact and, and meet each other and, and just amplify? Yes, absolutely. I feel that um, where we're going now, I mean, with this, it's quite exciting, especially for people that can't really travel around. You'll get to meet people who ordinarily you wouldn't have ever met. So for me, it's quite exciting. Whoever is in this project, I think, is doing the right thing. And then again, you interact with other cultures, and then you can understand what is happening in other areas of the world. I think it's one of the best things that could ever happen. If it's done well, I mean, now we're having the, we now have to perfect the avatar of, you know, we're still having it in various forms. But at least if it's with, with time perfected, I think it's going to be quite interesting where you can actually see people, their body language, their gestures. I think it will be extremely interesting. Yeah. Very good. I, I'm always so interested in new technology. I'm very much an early adopter. And I'd love to study the networks and to think about the internet happened and now we lift Airbnb. What are some of the things that you are starting to dream about in this new metaverse? Is it the new digital helping with bridging you know, the, the digital reality with the 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 physical reality. What do you see, like you know, education, commerce, training? What are you starting to, to visualize in your in your dreams? Yeah, I, I well, for this part of the world, I can see so many exciting things happening. I will talk first about education. Uh, you know, you teach, and um, it's quite difficult to imagine some of the things that have happened maybe five hundred years ago, two hundred years ago. But with this, you can simulate. You can simulate and actually experience what happened then. I think that goes a long way. I'm, I'm now talking about education. Mm -hmm. And um, when you, I'll just, you know, point some few areas where I think it's quite, going to be quite exciting. When you look at a pilot, for example, you could simulate that. You could get trained as a pilot without having to actually fly a plane. Uh, again, to me, I feel that is awesome. You look at medical, you have uh, somebody training as a surgeon. You could also, you know, do surgical procedure virtually. To me also, that is good. You look at shopping, 
I, my favorite program is um, Your Homemade Perfect on BBC Lifestyle. And um, you see how virtual reality can help you not only reduce cost, also reduce the risk of getting things you don't like. You see it before you actually purchase. I think, you know, the sky's the limit. You look at engineering, you could have your processes simulated before you actually go to the field to get things done. Uh, it's, it's endless. I mean, the interaction of people, uh, you have programs, you can be anywhere and um, have programs done, entertainment. I think it's, uh, it's a new ball game entirely. It's something that I know by the time it gets to its peak, uh, we'll probably look back and ask ourselves, why didn't we do this uh, like 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, Thank Lynn, you. I'm going to turn it back to you. you know, so you've been really burning the midnight oil and launching your NFT project. And, you know, should we consider launching one? Like, what was your, you know, looking at unpacking the roadmap and, you know, managing this from, you know, distributed teams? Like, what are some of the good learnings that you've, you've experienced over the last 72 hours and then unpacking it for the last kind of six months because I'm sure the 70, last 72 hours were intense, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say that, you know, really when you think about it, it really goes back to sort of um, principles-based versus sort of a rules-based environment. So you, you start, you know, what we did was we started with this sort of idea, validating the idea. Does this company, you know, do they really need to create this NFT? And they really wanted to uh, the chairman was just so excited about it. So, you know, I would say um, unless you have a fair amount of change to make the project successful, because I think the thing that was startling to me is um, just what you said, this decentralized distributed network of of people. You know, we, many of us here have worked for large organizations. I just call a department, the IT department and say, hey, I'm working on a project. Can you send up, you know, your best people? Uh, you know, accounts payable, you know, whatever department it is, you know, the treasury function, can you send up the best people? That's easy. When you are in a completely decentralized world, I mean, I'll give you an example. The artist is from the mountains of Lebanon. The DevOps is from London. The um, the company is located in Pittsburgh, uh, well, just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, the chairman is in North Carolina. Uh, we have a person in Texas who's doing marketing. Um, and then we have a couple people in Boston. We have another person in Washington, D.C., creating the community management. And so, it, you know, it's a whole new ball game of, of, of really what I look at um, strategy, looking for outcomes. How do we get the outcomes that we're looking for? The thing that I found, uh, two things, I guess, that I found most interesting is building of the community. You know, many of you probably heard about Board Apes. That was, you know, I, I don't know, I, I'm not going to say 100% or 80%, but there was a significant amount of building a community. And in this new world, and I'm sure my um, uh, co-speakers here would feel the same way, that is a real, that is a real important piece of this whole puzzle. Very, very critical versus, you know, you look at a big company, we already have a brand, right? We already have a brand. And so a company might have a brand, but now I'm creating a community of people with like-minded ideas. I like to collect things or, you know, I'm a runner or I'm this, you know, that's building that community, which is what we're doing now is, is really intense. And it is beyond what I've ever worked on between the press and then making sure that, you know, you're welcome. So it's a really new experience. I think um, if you're, you know, I think you have to have a different mindset than maybe I had. I have a creative person with me, you know, and really you have to have a, um, a diverse team. And again, it's decentralized. So managing all that is, you know, is different. So what is the age ranges? Do you have, is it just all over the background? I mean, it's the smorgasbord of, the place. Of, of ages. Yep. I mean, we have someone 25, uh, probably up to, you know, 65 working on this. Um, and, you know, I will say, um, you know, uh, there you do meet people. We we had someone who you know remain nameless, but initially started working with us as a community manager. And and what I didn't realize is it is a twenty four seven three sixty five job initially when you launch sort of an NFT. And um, 
this person had launched one before and frankly just got sick and, and basically had to not do the project because it is so time consuming. And, you know, it's, it's almost like an addiction. They just get so involved and it's 24 seven and depending on the launch itself. So um, the ages are all over the place. And I think that was one of the things that scared me a little bit is we have what I would consider some young folks making some substantial amount of money for, you know, hard to people like me, hard to measure work, you know, so. Right. And Pearlie, let's kind of continue on some of the ideas about what type of skills. What are your thoughts around like which skill sets do you feel are most applicable to this new area? And what are, what are you always looking for? Like, what is the one that you just can't find? In, in a building the metaverse. So I, I think the, the high level message would be that we all have a stake in the metaverse because if it is the natural next evolution of personal computing platform and internet, all of us need to have a say, have a say. More women at the table, more designers and storytellers, you know, non-traditional technical talents only, but very diverse inputs to make sure that this future that we build uh, will be fully inclusive and considerate for everybody's benefits. And so I wanted to zoom back to, to, to echo many of um, the, the benefits of what VR can, can bring that Ola Shula had already averted. So I agree with everything she said, already, clearly a bit advocate for virtual reality technologies. We can already see today simulation, the learning efficacy, um, and, and all of that. I invest in a lot of different applications in, in, in those spaces. I want to add maybe a few more uh, thoughts on for people to consider what virtual and immersive tech can already bring today is actually fostering a deeper connection with yourself. Imagine, you know, I wake up in the morning, I jump into one of these, I can be in Iceland on my favorite glacier that I've hiked maybe three times physically in the real world. But I get to do this every morning in my living room before the storm uh, of, of having waking up to three children. Um, so the, 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 this is a good example of how the magic of trans, being transported and being immersed in a completely different world that's not physically possible in the real world can be used to positively benefit someone's mental well-being um, to, and, and even used to address as a lot of patient therapeutic needs as well, whether that's physical rehab from stroke or as more severe mental problems. And we're starting to work with partners of all kinds around the world to try to productize, commercialize these type of solutions to, to help people use these technologies for their tangible benefits starting today. That's one, right? connecting deeper with yourself and with, with your health. The other the other side of things Aloshula uh, averted to earlier is actually the ability to co-create memories. I think it's much harder for the four of us to match it to remember this experience as a, co a memory or something really fun we did together because we're four rectangulars with head and shoulders and nothing beyond that. Imagine we're able to conven convene in the amazing space where we can feel you know each other spatially and have that spatial memory of having done something together, having remember your body language and your gestures and your face tracking and you know all these things that would develop. That has been the one way for me to have co-creative memories with my colleagues, with my families uh, throughout the pandemic. When in an age of a lot of physical separation, which will continue to, to be the case for many people, immersive technology create a possibility to feel immersed, feel the presence and co-create memories. And that imagine on you know productivity front, but also in the ways that you spend more time with your loved ones. Is not to say that we're replacing a lot of these real world experiences with the, that of digital, but the, those of time that we spend in the digital world when more immersive and more contextual and more uh, amazing actually makes those time that we spend in the digital world more efficient, more effective and, and more memorable so that we get to appreciate our physical interactions and experiences even more. So yeah. that that's what I wanted people to, to think a little yeah. more about. Yeah. So you're saying that you, that all of us can come hiking on your glacier tomorrow morning in Iceland, right? And that hopefully that's, that's what we're going to do. Meditate. Yeah. And that would yeah. be a way to start our day. So game on. Absolutely. Let's do that. <laughs> tell me, so you're saying that we can have more shared experiences. So we can have this common experience that can help us build these teams, build better relationships. And, and also even when we're unpacking things for ourselves, we're able to just kind of 
think of things in a very different way through the metaverse and through this, their VRs. Absolutely. And not just any experience that other companies and storytellers build for you, I think what the metaverse promises is also a lower entry barrier to creation because of con contextual AI tools, of uh, intuitive interfaces to create, whether that's speech or that's you know using your whole body. You and I could start creating worlds and assets and experiences. We start interacting in it. Imagine new economics and livelihoods that emerge out of this new new realm of possibility. So, so that's another area that I'm extremely excited about. Doctors and hospitals and professors can now tr create three dimensional experiences to train their doctors, their 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 medical students, and and you know doctors pre operation can fly into the patient's brain or heart in a three dimensional way to plan better surgery and ensure. Better better outcome. So yes, absolutely. This is a way for us to, you know, create experience things together, but also have to possibly create things, have more agency in all of our hands. So more people create. And, and I think ultimately that big concept is in abundance. These, uh -huh. these things are all infinitely scalable. All of us can create and participate in an economic way as well. You know, if here comes blockchain, you know, that enables us to have asset ownership, whether that is an NFT collection or our avatars or our digital skin or, you know, the, the property to, to our digital world. Um, so many different ways. Artists can create concerts and engage your fans like never before. Um, and even kids can start creating these things to, to interact with one another, uh, not just being passive content consumer, but starting to be a more of a creator as well. I love it. I want to bottle your enthusiasm for this. I hope everyone <laughs> can, uh, can transcend the, the internet today and, and as we... As you were speaking, I was just energized. Um, Alice Shola, I want to move over to you. And I want to ask the implications of these interactions. Uh, and I'm going to start with the bad first, then we're going to end on the good. Do you have anything that you're wanting to say, hmm, we want to maybe stay away from? I always think about when the internet started. I know some of my friends are catfish and there are people posing as other people. What do you think about that? And then tell us about some of the really great interactions that you think about. Um, it's quite interesting. I, as a person, I don't like talking about the bad part, but again, <laughs> there's always a bad part to something. But mm -hmm. I, 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 let me start with the good part. I think, you know, uh, just as mentioned, I think the interaction, you know, cannot be really overemphasized. And um, to me, it's coming at this age, it, it gives you a different experience. If you can sit uh, I, I'm taking, for example, a, a child in a village back here and could see what is happening in America, could interact. Because I could remember, I'm just giving an example, I remember my son and his game on Minecraft and he keeps coming to me, I need to buy a cave, I need to buy this on the internet, which is, you know, really it's going to be on, on, a, on a different scale now. And you know, and I could see, because I was worried at first, will he be lonely? But I found that he was not lonely, and he keeps telling me the countries of where his friends are. And I can now imagine it with the metaverse, where you can physically then see people's body language. I guess it becomes more interesting. But I'm, I'm taking just one specific example now as um, having to break it down. The only problem I might have with that eventually is, would well, the child wants to leave his system to physically exercise, that's another problem. I mean, so you can go on with the bad part. Every, everything, even the physical interaction also has its own bad part. So mm -hmm. I think it's a matter of how do we balance these things? How do we balance it at the end of the day? It becomes more of an advantage than a disadvantage. But I think the advantage of it far outweigh the disadvantage because I can see a lot of things being... Even in the world, in fact, with this happening, this is what I would call the global village. Uh, because then you're all interacting and you're seeing your body languages, you're seeing how you're just <laughs> about yourself. So I think with this, it brings more and uh, brings a more understanding. Maybe if you even get to a stage where people understand themselves more uh, in terms of culture, what happens in, if I'm an American? What am I expecting if, I, if, I'm, if I'm a Chinese? What is it expect? You know, it, it brings that together. And maybe with the better understanding of each other, we have a better world, you know, really. 
and it makes people less uh, because you hear all sorts of different stories on the internet. Again, we already have a platform in which uh, we can have this meta vast technology, you know, develop. We already have the Facebook, we have WhatsApp, we're interacting. But we're now looking at it at a, you know, a higher scale where people can then interact and uh, see each other and there's body language and so on. I feel looking at it from the positive point of view, even when listening to news, you can then you know, have a different perspective and a full reasoning of what is happening out there. Or when you're interacting with somebody and you you know, some things are said or done, you can begin to understand other people than from where you are at any point. Just talking about that, but I think with the advantages, I spoke about uh, having to use the virtual reality to, to, to and, and it's good to get to that. I would, for example, want to shop without having to go there physically. I look at dresses, I like it, and it's worn on my body, you know. I see how it looks like. I, I rather prefer that than having to keep changing my clothes for each one. So that just is endless, if you ask me. You want to, there's somebody very ill uh, in a remote village. You want to treat that person. How do we do that? With uh, you can do that. You can get uh, somebody, you know, but treated without having to actually remove that person from where he, he or she is. So when you go on to the various education, the same thing, you, you're probably looking at a specialized area. Maybe you want to teach American culture. And the person that you got don't want to come over to where you are. You could do it using, um, you know, this metaverse. So I guess the advantages, if you ask me, is what I'm looking at. The few ones that are in my head for disadvantage, I think could be money because nothing really... Uh, you would say it doesn't have its own disadvantage. But I think the advantage is by the time it's perfected. And I like the energy on, on this platform, especially the two other ladies. I mean, I can see the sky being the limit, you know, by the time it's now perfected. Olashola, if I could just buy shoes and really understand if they're comfortable using the metaverse, that's when <laughs> I know that it's good. I want to say. Um, all right, I've got a couple of other questions, and we've got about 10 minutes left. So, Lynn, we're starting to see some really interesting pieces, uh, interesting pieces develop and interesting people that are starting to dive in. And there was an article that I saw a couple months back about Mila Kunis, Reese Witherspoon, who has 900 million reasons to be happy after she just successfully sold her company, and Gwyneth Paltrow. They're jumping into this. Why, are, why is Hollywood all of a sudden jumping into this? Well, I think there, you know, to me, there is money to be made, but also I think they have a brand, right? And, and when I talked about that community management, it's much easier if you have a big brand or a big name. So whether you're a musician or an artist or people, or, that really helps build that community because you have to take, you know, you're bridging a gap from you know, whether it's Facebook, or whatever, into this new sort of world, this metaverse. So I think that's part of, I think that's a big part of it. It's a brand and, and it's marketable. All right. Um, what do you think, Carly? Why are these Hollywood ladies jumping in? Do they smell I think, I think some of us have to mute our phones when not speaking. So to reduce the echo, there are quite, quite a bit of it. Um, well, I think anything that is overhyped, <laughs> And driven by greed will not necessarily end well. But I actually do admire some of their initiatives in articulating why they're into this. They want to empower you know, next generation, especially under uh, banked uh, women, minority, to understand the wealth creation opportunities in Web3 and crypto. So I think a, a common uh, community that pulls some of these names that you mentioned uh, is this community called BFF, Best Friend Forever, or you know, in, in the crypto sense, and they were trying to very much target their content to, to women to talk about money, talk about, you know, generating wealth in crypto, because all these crypto bros have made their billions. And, you know, it's, it's our sh shot, too. So I think it, it, there's a good story to be told there. Clearly, this is a uh, very, very volatile um, market. And most people have very little knowledge and sense of just, just 
<laughs> how dangerous it could be. And you know, when the tide goes, is when you you know who are swimming naked. And now you know the current meltdown kind of serves as a good reminder uh, um, of you know what this, this kind of speculative asset class uh, should do. But I think intellectually speaking, it is very important that all of us um, take an intellectual interest in understanding why blockchain technologies and crypto in defense, decentralized finance and uh, DAOs could play a role in the future of our internet. You know, the Web three, so called Web three. There's clearly a lot of noises um, that are maybe not at all necessary. A lot of speculation, pump and dump, and a lot of um, a toxic culture that is not conducive to building a better internet or digital uh, society for the future. But there are definitely snippets of it that are insightful and beneficial for thinking of designing this next evolution of internet. That is the metaverse, where immersive interfaces converge with blockchain technologies and digital asset ownership, next generation network, contextual AI, all of this coming together to make our digital lifestyle and interactions much more meaningful, hence enhancing real world um, relationships and experiences. I think ultimately that is the promise of the technology. And as long as we are clear eye about what some of these potential downfalls are, like when you're saying, you know, what could be the dark part with Alushola with uh, Alushola was very uh, delicate in saying, you know, she's very positive. Of course, the sci-fi authors already tell us what the dystopia looks like, right? Where the real world crumbles and all of us just live in our headset, you know, all day long because what is, you know, why would there be a reason to leave, right? But uh, I think it is really quite the opposite. Um, even though in the metaverse, there will be a lot of compelling, extremely compelling reasons to be whoever you want to be, to endless possibilities and amazing experiences. Ultimately, it is love. It is our real human relationship relationship interactions and physical world experiences that make us human, make us pursue a, a purposeful and meaningful life. And so I feel like the metaverse will just make our time spent in digital life much more gratifying and then inspire us to appreciate physical much, much more. Um, and so I think this applies to, you know, I think this lens should inform how people think about all these pillar technologies uh, instead of speculate, think about the positive uh, potential that this can bring to all of us, unleashing unleashing possibilities of imagination, but also leveling playing grounds. So lots of reasons to stay optimistic, that I agree. Excellent. So I'm going to move to our lightning round now, ladies. So shorter answers, please. I want to talk about what are the two or three facts that you dangled in front of folks when people said you're going from finance into this new world. What are you doing? So what were the two or three you know, sound bites that you put in front of them? Uh, Lucia, I'm going to start with you. Like, What do you say to people when they're like, what are you doing and what are you getting involved in? Sorry, could you could you repeat that question? I didn't hear sure, the question. Sure. What are the two or three sound bites that you tell people when you start to talk about the metaverse? And they're like, huh? What, what are you doing? Like, what are the two or three things that you say to people so that they see that this digital lifestyle is the way forward? Okay. And why um, are you spending your time doing this? Yep. Well, it, it's um, it's quite it, to me. I start with the fact that it's not really new. It's just enhanced. Uh, if you're on Facebook, which many people are on, uh, if you use WhatsApp, uh, I, I, I'll just say to you, look, it's an enhanced platform where you would now see a more reality setup. Uh, saying that, it makes it much easier. Uh, it's it's uh, quite straightforward. Uh, and I try to give examples of what could be done in virtual reality. And I think the issue of the COVID has helped to understand what it would look like. So it's like, oh, it's an advanced level of you having uh, been on Zoom. But this time, uh, you know, you, you, you could be in various um, settings without actually being there. So, again, it's easy to, to explain to people and um, Looking at the advantage of it, uh, better interaction, better understanding of each other, more meaningful interaction with people, and uh, of course, using it depending on your area. And of course, like I said, the forums are already there. You find people with various forums, but in this case, it will be more of a reality forum uh, than you know just the internet connection thing. So those are the few things I would would mention. Fantastic. And we've yeah. had an incredible journey this week and, and considering the roller coaster that we've all been seeing in regards to the crypto market and, yeah. you, know, you know, 
regarding what's happening in the digital world. Are you feeling bullish, bearish, or something else, Lynn? Uh, uh, cautiously uh, bullish, I would say. You know, and and frankly, I mean, I'm bullish. I think that this is uh, this is going to happen. Uh, maybe not this week, right? But we are going to the metaverse for the last couple of weeks. I've been looking at different packages and platforms, and you know, uh, very much to Olishola's point. You know, you you can if you're a paraplegic, you can go to a museum. You can actually walk around a physical museum. I mean, in the corners and, you know, it it changes people's lives. So it's not just, um, you know, you don't have to go to a car dealership anymore. You can see every aspect of that car and feel like you're in a dealership, right? I mean, that's what exists in this technology. And I think um, it's not going away. It is only at the, you know, it's at infancy stage. So, um, you know, cautiously, I would say I'm bullish. Excellent. Pearly, are you comfortable in your digital skin? Ah, <laughs> always, always, always comfortable in our own skins and hopefully empowering more people to feel the same way. I love the, the um, kind of enthusiasm about actually the education part of things. Tomorrow I'm boarding a flight to New York with my three young children. We're going to be going to the ancient pyramids together in oh. VR in a large space, free roaming. And we're going to have a guide that guides us through, you know, take us 5,000 years back, go toward the, every aspect of the, the Egypt, the, the pyramids. Of, of Khufu um, for 45 minutes. And we did this in Paris a few months back to toward the Notre Dame, going all the way back in 800 years in the beginning of the, the building and learn all the, the backstories. And so, so I think this technology is so interesting and profound. It actually takes us across time and space to create more abundance for everyone. I think that's ultimately the reason of hope, um, that we can create this future that's full of abundance. Maybe that, that will be the reason to promote more love and peace in the real world. So I'm going to leave it at that. I don't think I could have a better wrap up than that, Pearly. Thank you. Lynn Marler, Pearly Chen, and Alalusha, thank you so much. I, I'm going to mangle your name, but I just love everything that you said. And I think, ladies, thank you so much for joining me on this digital journey and, and being able to go without your passport and just go for the ride. I'm loving it. Thanks, ladies. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very thank you so much, much, Mary. And nice to meet you. Thank you, all, ladies. Bye. Thank Take you. care. Bye.